Welcome back. So in this second video, we're going to pull out MATLAB again, and we're just going to show you how to generate some simple plots and a couple of tricks for making them look relatively nice. All right, so I'm, I'm going to again open MATLAB up, and I'm going to create a new file straight off in which I'm going to perform my plots. Now, all I want to do in this particular um, tutorial is just to show you how to plot some functions um, and also how to plot some individual points. Because sometimes we want to draw a graph where we've got some points and maybe a line that goes through them. And so let's have a look at how we might do that. So I want to plot the, fun the function f of x, or let's just make it y, equals x squared plus 3x um, plus 1. And I want to make that look nice so I can put it in an assignment or something. This is what I want to do between x equals negative 2 and 2, for example. Okay, so the way we do it is we first generate a vector of x values, um, and they want to be between negative 2 and 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a whole lot of x values between negative 2 and 2, and then we're going to calculate the y values to go with them, and then we're going to plot them together. So there's a useful command called linspace, which just means linearly spaced, uh, a vector of linear, linearly spaced things. So you just provide it with the first thing, the start point, the end point, and how many points you want. I want my curve to be nice and smooth looking, so I'm going to go for 200 points. And because I didn't put a semicolon on my command, it's gone and spat the whole thing out onto the screen. I could do it again. I hit the up arrow. I put a semicolon on this time, and it's hidden it away. So I'm going to put this command in my file so I can run it again later. Maybe not there, let's put it underneath my comments. And so now if I run this, it will just calculate that vector x for me, and I'm going to call this plotting. Now to calculate y, if you've watched the previous video to, video to this one, we can do this really simply by just performing exactly the calculation we want on our vector x. Now we want to square every single element of this long row vector x that it's created for us, but we don't want to use matrix multiplication to square it. So remembering our little lesson from last time, we put a dot there, a power for squared, and that will just make the vector y equal to x squared. x squared is not what I want. I want x squared plus 3 times x plus 1, and MATLAB is smart enough to just get that correct. So I'll run this file, and it's calculated that y for me. Again, it's not very helpful just seeing it in the command window like this, but this is my vector y. I'm going to put a semicolon on that one as well so I don't have to look at it, and I now, when I run my file, it calculates x and y for me. You can see what variables you have currently available if you look over in the workspace box over here. I have a variable x, and it says it's 1 by 200, so it's a row vector with 200 entries, and I have a vector y, which is the same size, so I should be able to plot these against each other. Now's where the fun starts. So to start with, we can just go plot x versus y. At its most basic level, that will work. So if I now run this, MATLAB will produce for me a nice plot of x versus y. It may not be the most beautiful thing in the world, but there it goes. So it looks like part of a quadratic, that's good. Um, you can see that it's chosen my y scale automatically for me. It doesn't plot any axis lines or anything like that. You're supposed to just infer those for yourself but it does put on the x and y limits as numbers on your graph. Okay, so if we want to put this in a report, we want a little bit more detail on here, so there are a few little tricks that I can share with you to make it look a bit nicer. First off, if we want to put some labels on our axes, we just use the command x label and y label, and then we put the text that we want inside single quotes. So I'm just going to call my x label x and my y label y, but you could call it whatever you like. For example, if it was something measured in seconds, you could put the units of your, your variable there, for example. So I'm going to run that again. I'll bring my plot back to the front, and you can see I now have x and y values uh, printed there. So that looks a little bit better. Um, we could put a title on as well if you we want. Title my groovy graph of y equals 3, y equals x squared plus 3x plus 1. And I run this now, and you can see that it's, it should have added on a title. 
And look, a little bit of magic. Um, it has recognized that I actually want a squared and it's drawn the x squared plus 3x plus 1 correctly up there. Okay, so there is a graph. Um, if we want to put this in a document, maybe we might want to make the fonts a little bit bigger or something like that, or we might want to make the line a bit thicker or a different color or something. So there are a few commands we can put in here. If, first off, if we want to make it a different color, we can choose our color by specifying a letter, like G for green, R for red, B for blue, K for black, because we can't use B, we already used that for blue. So if I want to make it, let's make it green. I should now have a green graph. No, I don't like that. We're going to go back to blue. We'll just leave it how it was. That was fine. Run this, and I should now have a blue graph. If I want to make the line a bit thicker, I can add a, a new thing here saying line width, and I can choose a width of 2. 1 is the default, so that should make my line a bit thicker. And if I want to make my fonts a bit bigger, I can go something like at the bottom, or up here even, set GCA, you don't need to understand what this command means, but it's setting the font size of my current axis, that's what GCA is, get current axes, I can make it bigger, so if, let's say if I want to make it 16, it's, I think by default, it's, by default it's something like 10 or 12. If I run this, now I've got bigger X and Y values, maybe that's too big for what you want, it, it really depends, um, but you have control over this using this command. And then if I'm ready to save this, I can just go File, Save As, and I can choose the type of figure that I want when the dialog comes up. And you can save it as a PNG. PNG is probably one of the best ones to save it as. It's nice and small file size. Do that. Choose that one over a JPEG because JPEGs put some nasty compression and look, look a bit jagged. So PNG is usually a good choice. Um, there are other more specialized formats that you might want to use as well, but I'd, I'd recommend PNG as a good format to save it as. I'm going to save this as my first plot, and that should just save. And with that, MATLAB has presumably saved our figure. I'm not 100% sure where I put it. There it is. So if I were to open that, right click on it, and open it outside MATLAB, then we'd be able to see what this figure file looks like. Photos is fine. And you can see there's a nice looking graph that we could put in a document. Just a file we could drag into a Word document or whatever. And yeah, so there, there's a whole lot more customization we could do, but we can mess around with our, our plots by essentially playing with these parameters. One other thing I'll show you, if you want to make your line dotted, you can put a colon here. Let's just show you what that looks like. It will give you a dotted line. Or if you want to make it dashed, you can put a double dash like that. And that will give you a dashed line, you may want to do that. So if you look up the help for plotting, you can find all sorts of information about how you can customize this. So that, that's just sort of a brief introduction of the types of things you might want to do. I'll give you one final command to make it look nice. And this is the command grid on. And you can see what it will do is it will put a little grid on your, on your, on your axis so that you can actually trace your points out a little bit better. Also, if you've maximized your figure like this before you save it, it will come out a little bit different shaped as well. Okay, so let's just remove our dashes. We don't really want those. We want our quadratic, and let's just put a couple of extra dots on our picture for some reason. Let's say we've got five different points that we also want to show as red, point, red dots on our figure. So x for dots, let's give it a variable name. x dots is, let's say the, the x coordinates of these points are at negative 1, 0, 1, um, 1 1.5, and I don't know, negative 0 0.5. And the y coordinates of my dots, let's just say they are, I'm just, I'm just making points up here, so 2, 3, 0, 1, and 2. If I want to plot these on my graph as well, I could go plot x dots, y dots, 
And this time I want to draw them as single points. So I'm going to go R dot for a single point. That will plot my each of these points in my vectors here as individual points. And it's going to make my, they're going to come up as very small dots. So let's just see what that looks like. So I'm going to run this and it's not going to quite work and I'll tell you why in a second. Okay, if you look closely, those dots are there, but A, they're tiny, and B, our previous graph looks like it's disappeared. Okay, they're so small that we almost can't see them, but if you look closely, all five dots are in fact there. There's one there, one there, one up there, one down there, and one over here. So first off, we don't want to lose our previous graph. We want them two at once. So if we put in the command hold on, MATLAB that understands this as meaning um, don't delete the, pic the previous graph, just draw on top of the next one. I can always delete it by closing the figure before I run it again. But if I put hold on, it will draw the next picture on top of the first one. So if I now run that, that will solve my first problem. It hasn't deleted my previous graph, but I've just got now five tiny dots on this picture where I want big ones. <coughs> so the last thing I want to do is make these big. So I just, just like with my line width parameter up here, there's a parameter called marker size, and I'm going to make that 12. I think by default it's one, or maybe two, I can't remember. If I now run this, I should be getting closer to the type of picture I want. You can see those dots are looking quite a lot bigger now. That's better, but maybe they're still a bit small. Let's make them size 20. That's looking much better. And I want some kind of explanation as to what these are. So the last thing I want to do in this video is to show you the legend command. So if you just put legend and then you put some labels in, in the order which you plotted them. So blue curve or blue quadratic and my dots then it will make a little legend for you on the graph. Because my font size is quite large, it will probably take over a chunk of space. Let's try that again, it's having problems. There we go, and you can see that it will put on your picture a nice explanation of what your different curves are with the labels that you liked. And this is a much nicer looking picture that we could put into a document with nice labels on it. Okay, obviously this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can make many, many beautiful looking plots in MATLAB and you can customize them a whole lot. But this hopefully is enough to get you started and to play around. So enjoy having fun with that.